Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. Welcome to the second installment of our October National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, October 21st, 2021, a part of our ongoing webcast series, The Importance of Community and Connectedness in Cybersecurity Webcast. Before we get into it, just a couple orders of business. One is make sure you mute your phones and microphones when not talking and please feel free to ask questions of the panelists. Um, Lakeisha, Chris, and Mary Beth, you can post those in the Zoom group chat feature and I'll be, I'll be moderating those and, and looking for those. And um, you know, I don't know if the panelists have a preference to, to wait and to hold the questions till the end or to ask them as they come through. Um, do you have a preference at all? Whatever works best. Yeah. Okay, whatever works best. Okay, sounds good. So um, please feel free to ask questions. We've run this webcast series for a number of years. It's usually the last Thursday of each month. It's an hour long, usually runs at 2 p.m. Eastern time. This being National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we wanted to do a couple extra. So out of, out of band, if you will, sort of out of the cycle. Um, but we do record these. This is being recorded right now, and they are archived on our YouTube channel. And the next one coming up, you can see the title here, uh, October 28th, a week from today. And I will post a link in the Zoom group chat to a registration page where you can register for that, for that upcoming webcast. So today's webcast, I'm Casey O'Brien, Assistant Executive Director and Co-Principal Investigator of the National Cyber Watch Center. I'll be the moderator today. And our esteemed panelists, Mary Beth, Chris, and Lakeisha. And before I turn it over to Lakeisha, I just I want to call out a couple of things. So you'll see that uh, in the sort of under the two logos, there is the 2021 Innovations in Cybersecurity Education Best Submission Runner-Up. So the Innovations in Cybersecurity Education Program is a National Cyber Watch Center program that's now gone on for four years where we essentially elicit submissions to um, uh, a number of categories around um, programmatic development, um, in instructional um, effectiveness, um, evidence-based practices, and the community can submit submissions um, to the program and then a, a group of panelists um, rank judges and ranks those submissions and then we produce a publication a digital publication each year with these various submissions and this past year because of the the, uh, the online rush if you will transition to online uh, necessitated by covid we decided to do a special a special theme, if you will, for for the innovations program. You know, essentially looking at well, what are those? What are the the transformations that had to take place within a higher education institution with the with the push to online because of COVID, and and um, this the importance of the importance of community and connectedness in cybersecurity was the the best submission runner up um, for that for that. 2021 innovations program and so that's part of why we're highlighting this specific this specific program and when i hand the baton off next to lakeisha to to run her her slides i'm going to post a link to where you can download the innovations in cybersecurity education publication you can do a little deeper dive into their presentation that they're going to do today as well as the the best submission um and then and then the results of a of a a perception, a COVID perception survey that we submitted, or um, not submitted, that we that we administered on behalf of our National Cybersecurity Student Association. So, without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing, and Lakeisha, you should be able to. I have it. Run the show. Looking good. Thanks. Thank you, Lakeisha, and thank you, Casey, for the introduction and, and for um, helping, Lakeisha, for helping to manage the slides. Um, this is Mary Beth Klinger, who is currently speaking. I will start the presentation, but I thought before we, we formally get started, 
why, why don't I just go ahead and, and make sure that Lakeisha and Chris both have a chance to introduce themselves as well as myself. So if you don't mind, let me turn it back to Lakeisha to just say hello to everybody, then Chris, and then I'll finish up before I launch into our presentation. Hello, my name is Lakeisha Furby. I'm the cybersecurity program coordinator and the cybersecurity assistant professor. Um, I'm also the project coordinator for our NSF project here at CSM. Chris, I will hand it to you next. All right, thanks, Lakeisha. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Estes. I'm the acting uh, department chair for the technology department. So that's overseeing all, it's not only cybersecurity, um, but computer science and information systems and our cloud program as well. Um, and previously I was the cybersecurity program coordinator and uh, they still let me teach a little bit. So I teach one, one class a semester in either cybersecurity or computer science um, in there. And I'll go ahead and let Mary Beth introduce herself. Okay, great. Thank you both. And then I'm Mary Beth Klinger and I am currently a business professor and coordinating the business programs here at the College of Southern Maryland. I've been a co-PI on the cybersecurity grant since its, since its inception two years ago and heavily involved in the organization and management of the grant in terms of all the different pieces and every, all the exciting things we've been doing over the past couple of years. So I will start the presentation, then Chris will provide some information, then Lakeisha will talk, and then I'll, I'll come back in and wrap everything up. So again, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon as we talk about and present on the importance of community and connectedness within cybersecurity. Next slide, please. The focus of our presentation or the overall agenda will be kind of a seven tiered approach, if you will where we will start with an overview of our cybersecurity program here at the College of Southern Maryland. We will talk to you about what we have been doing within the National Science Foundation project that we've been running for the last couple of years. Within that project, we will highlight the importance of connectedness and the, the, um, the inclusivity that we have worked with the students within the project to bring forth. We will do that through talking about various project activities that we've been involved in, and then how we've formulated best practices from conducting those activities to ultimately come at a variety of project outcomes that we hope to show as we wrap up this project in its third and final year. We will then conclude our discussion with some final thoughts on moving forward. And the next slide. So the College of Southern Maryland has been working to strengthen the cybersecurity workforce throughout the Southern Maryland region. This includes Charles County, Calvert County, and St. Mary's County. We have been doing that by trying to coalesce both government, industry, and academia, again, both within Southern Maryland as well as throughout the Washington, D.C. region. To help us in our quest, we have engaged in a National Science Foundation project to recruit, retain, and graduate underrepresented cybersecurity students. And as I alluded to earlier, we have been aiming to do so within a climate of connectedness and inclusivity. We have been working on a variety of, variety of activities that include team building, field trips, career exploration, and, and other, other, other activities and events. Before we launch into a discussion of the actual project though, let me turn it over to Chris, thank you, Lakeisha, with a review of the, the cybersecurity program. Okay, thanks Mary Beth. Yes, um, I'll, I'll talk about that. And, and to reiterate, it's, it's kind of interesting um, Casey, that, that during your introduction, you brought up the whole, you know, looking at this through the lens of COVID and our NSF program predates COVID. So we started this in late 2019, um, in, in the fall of 2019, our, our project got approved and we, and we got moving on it. And as we hit March of, of 2020, as I'm sure everybody else did, we all sort of scattered and went home and didn't come back for a long time. And just to look at this project through the lens of COVID, I think it really stresses the importance 
um, and underlines the importance of, of what we were doing, because I think not having that sense of community um, would have been even more detrimental to, to our students. And at least having this underpinning of we were already in the process of doing things to build community was um, certainly something that was a plus through COVID. So I think COVID hampered certainly our, our progress on this project. Um, but on the other hand, I think the, the, the work that we did um, was uh, of even more benefit than it would have been had, had COVID never happened. So um, it's, an, it's an interesting point to sort of look backwards and, and see what we did over the last you know, 18 months or 20 months of, of COVID. So anyway, so with that, that sort of, you know, viewpoint in place, I'll, I'll give you just a quick snapshot of cybersecurity um, at CSM. We offer an AAS in cybersecurity. We actually, we actually offer a certificate and a letter of recognition program as well. Um, but the AAS is sort of a, a traditional um, two-year degree, 60 credits. Um, within that degree, there, there are three areas of concentration. The students can focus on network security, um, or digital forensics. And um, starting this year, we're rolling out the first cohort of students um, that are gonna be able to use or, or take, a, take information assurance as a concentration. That's a slightly less technical concentration, um, whereas the other two are focused you know, very much on networks or computers and, and, and software. Information assurance is gonna be much more focused on risk and the business impact of, uh, uh, of cybersecurity or the lack of cybersecurity. Um, like so many other uh, programs in our area, we are designated as a center of academic excellence by NSA and DHS. And um, we, we look at cybersecurity as a, as a multidisciplinary approach. This is not a place for specialists per se. Um, there's, there's certainly the opportunity to specialize, but within a two-year program, um, it's really about creating uh, generalists who can go out into the field and continue their education um, either on the job or at a four-year institution and start to develop those specializations where they find themselves most interested. But for us, the, the, the goal is to, to turn out well-rounded generalists. And um, typically, these are, these are the, the topic areas that we cover in our program from network administration, systems administration, application design and development digital forensics, ethical hacking, pen testing, and now we're adding on risk management as sort of a new, uh, a new general topic that students need to learn. But again, you know, and in, in, in not just at College of Southern Maryland, but I think anywhere that when you look at cybersecurity, this is, this is really a place for people who know a, a lot about everything. It's, it's not the place for specialists because it's very hard to say, um, you know, I'm, I, you know, you're a digital forensics person and a specialist in that area. Um, because you couldn't get there in terms of cybersecurity without knowing all of these other things at the same time. So um, that's certainly our goal is to turn out sort of well-rounded uh, students at the end of our program. So that's sort of a quick snapshot of our program. And I think Lakeisha, you're going to take over next, right? Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, we're still, I still have one more slide. So um, uh, on the, here we're showing, you know, industry certifications. We're not a, a certification factory. We don't um, you know, we're not a boot camp factory where that runs certifications for our students. However, that being said, we understand the importance of certifications and many of our courses are closely aligned to some of the certifications that we see here. So um, you, we see these CompTIA certifications uh, and we offer courses that um, are built from some of the curriculum uh, for, for those certifications. So a student could potentially um, finish uh, a class. So for instance, uh, you know, we, we offer sort of a general security class called ITS 2090, and that is very closely aligned with the CompTIA Security Plus. And for all of these CompTIA programs, we'll usually sort of skim off the cream and take our best students over the last couple of semesters, usually once a year, and run a, a weekend uh, boot camp and help prepare them for their certification examinations. Um, and we usually have some grant funding to help pay for um, for their their test vouchers. Um, we are a Cisco uh, Net Academy uh, institution. We follow the Cisco curriculum for networking. So again, if they complete all of the the three what used to be four, what are now three networking classes, that should prepare them for the CCNA, um, and and also the uh, the the 
EC Council for Computer Hacking, the Forensic Investigator Certification, or, or Digital Forensics classes. They're, if they choose that that specialization, um, they should be well prepared to to pass uh, that exam as well. So um, we do try to to have the students come out with more than just their degree on their resume, but at least some of these certifications. At the bare minimum, I, I like to see certain Security Plus, um, especially for students that are looking to go out into the workforce and not necessarily go on to a, a four-year university. So um, apologize for that. Um, and just to, to touch on our advisory council, um, we, we have some of our um, uh, participants from our advisory council listed here. Um, the advisory council is uh, composed of a number of organizations that are in our backyard. We have a very um, he heavy influence from the Navy in Southern Maryland. We have uh, Patuxent River Naval Air Station. We have the Indian Head. We have Dahlgren. And, and these three um, institutions are, are very close to, to the college. And not only is, are the three institutions themselves, so you actually see, you know, Naval Service Warfare Center and, um, you know, uh, NAWCAD, the Naval Warfare Center Aircraft Division, um, but we have a number of consulting organizations and support organizations that feed them. So, and these are ultimately uh, organizations that um, absorb a lot of our students, um, either immediately after coming out of the college or um, students that go away, finish a four-year degree, and then come home. We have a lot of a lot of our students are very interested in staying in the area. Um, so then they, they put down deep roots here. And so the, the advisory council um, provides us uh, feedback on the students themselves and also on the curriculum. So we meet twice a year. We talk about the curriculum. We talk about developments in cybersecurity and talk about improvements that we can be making um, to the program as, as we move forward um, because it's constantly in change. And these are, these are people that are out there on, on the, the, the bleeding edge of that change. Um, so we, we, we appreciate their feedback and their support as well. So, okay, so I think that's my last slide. So now uh, Lakeisha will take over <laughs> yep, and talk a little bit about the, uh, the NSF project. All right. I think that that's you, Mary Beth. Yes, I think that will be me. That, yes. But Lakeisha, keep us on track, okay? Help us. I will. Okay, <laughs> great. So, as Chris talked about, we have a very robust and strong program in cybersecurity at the College of Southern Maryland. We're constantly innovating and trying to do new things, but still offering students a very rock solid program that makes them competitive in the workforce. National data as well as local data within Southern Maryland or even the Washington DC region has shown that a lot of cybersecurity professionals are needed now and into the future. So as we thought about our project and the focus that we wanted to take, one of the key things has been to grow that cybersecurity talent pipeline. We are focused on Southern Maryland because that's within with the, the college that the, the population that we serve within our college but we realize that it is to meet both local and national demands. Our goal has always been to deliver a diverse, educated and skilled cybersecurity workforce. Now, again, we have had to do that within the, the auspices of a pandemic and that has made the project more interesting and more exciting and more creative, but we are committed to, del to delivering the, the the, the workforce that the cyber, the, cyber work, the cyber community needs, whether it's in government, industry, or academia. Okay, next slide, please. So now as we talk about the project, I'm going to focus it just a bit on some of the highlights from the Innovations in Cybersecurity Education Program paper that was submitted. So we're talking about the project in total, but I'd also like to make sure it's focused to what was in, in, the, in, the, in the paper that, that, is, that has just been published. So the project, again, has, has, been, has attempted to broaden opportunities for our students. We have focused on underrepresented students to try to encourage them to not just enter the cybersecurity workforce, but to be successful there and to feel a part of the cyber community over the long term. So as Chris said, we were awarded the project in October 2019 when the world was fine and everything was going, was going um, swimmingly. And we accepted our year one students into the project in fall 2020. So we, we, had, just, we had just done some recruiting spring of 2020 
the pandemic hit, our first students started. Our second students were just brought into the, our second year students were just brought into the program this past fall in 2021. So pretty much our entire project, as far as working directly with the students and interacting with them, a lot of that has had to be virtual due to the, due to the nature of the pandemic and, and the way we've, we've been able to, to function and relate. Both year one and year, year two students completed what we call a project community scale questionnaire. The purpose of the questionnaire is to measure the student's sense of connectedness. That amount of connectedness or the term I mentioned earlier, inclusivity, that they feel within the college as well as with their cohort group. We measured their, their degree of connectedness as they started the project both in year one and year two now. And we will do the survey again when they leave the project and graduate with their cybersecurity degree. When we compare the results, which obviously we haven't had a chance yet to compare the, the, fin the finished pro pro product because none of the students have yet graduated. We hope to see the year one students graduating um, this, this coming year. We hope to show that if students feel engaged in their learning, and if, that, if they feel connected to each other, then that we can carry that over into a longstanding commitment that they will feel towards the profession and towards the professionals that they work with within the cybersecurity positions that they, that they later hold. The sense of connectedness was a key point of the paper. So we wanted to be sure to bring that out in this particular presentation. It is key that the students have a learning network that supports their professional networking, that allows them to feel a part of this professional cyber community. It's also very critical that the students generate a sense of self-efficacy and a sense of self-confidence, that they feel that they can do the, the, they can do quote unquote cybersecurity and that they can be successful in their career and move into leadership positions. The way we look at connectedness is through, again, this 20 question survey focused on student feelings as they relate to caring, support, community, and an overall desire of the student to learn. So let me just talk a little bit more about the project community questionnaire, and then that will launch us into a discussion on the various activities. So like I said earlier, the students participated in both the pre and the pre and students will participate in both a pre and post survey. They have all completed the pre survey at the start of the project, and we will start doing the post survey very soon with our year one students. Again, the survey is 20 questions. It is a Likert style question on a five point scale that focuses on whether the students strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, or strongly disagree to questions such as, I feel that students in this project care about each other, or I trust others in this project, or I feel a part of the group. I feel that my goals are being met. I have a strong desire to learn. Conversely, some of the questions are reverse, where I don't trust others or I don't feel comfortable at the college or with this project. And again, students rank, rank their, their, their responses on a five point scale. What we'll do with the data, the quantitative data then, is we'll be able to extract an overall project community score based on, based on numerically on, on the quantitative numerical analysis of, of the different questions. So we'll have a project community score to measure community, as well as a score to measure connectedness, and then the student's overall sense of his or her learning. We hope to show that students that feel a part of a social and learning community through the NSF project, that they have felt connected and felt a part of the group, but we'll see what the results show. And again, as we've talked about throughout this presentation, given, given the last two years of the pandemic, it's going to be very interesting to see what the overall results show. 
So with that, let's talk a little bit about what we've been involved in to have this sense of community and connectedness. So Keisha will talk about some of our activities. And I'll tell you, uh, thank you, Mary Beth. Um, so what we did is um, we came up with various activities to um, build a sense of community with our NSF um, project participants. We started with just publicizing the event. Um, of course, with the pandemic, we had to do things a little bit differently, um, which I will go into a little bit as we as I continue talking about the various project activities that we had. So before the pandemic hit, we had our marketing um, or public publicity set up with the Night of Cyber. We had various speakers set up, field trips, um, competitions, boot camps, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once the pandemic hit, we we didn't get rid of the activities that we wanted to provide for our participants, but instead we had to think very creatively and find other ways to provide them the same experiences, but in a safe way, considering um, the circumstances we were in. So we always begin with our night of cyber and we held this virtually, oops, sorry about that. Um, and we held this virtually. Um, at our night of cyber, the we are, targeting incoming freshmen into um, CSM. And we introduced them to our cybersecurity program, as well as the NSF project. Here, the students have the opportunity to meet the cybersecurity faculty, the chair, and the dean of the program, and ask any type of questions about both the program and the project. Once we do that, um, as Mary Beth has already stated, um, the students who are interested in participating in the NSF project fill out an application and we select it from um, a, hand, a handful of students from the application to participate in the program. These students um, were given an opportunity of various projects and activities that may not always be available to the average cybersecurity student. We set up speaker series with um, individuals and organizations that are currently in the cybersecurity field. Uh, and uh, because of the pandemic, we actually were able to get higher level um, speakers within the company to virtually speak to our students. Um, because things were shut down, we were able to get VPs and CEOs and come and speak to our NSF participants about what it's like in the cybersecurity field, what kind of certifications they need, what do they need to know to get their foot in the door, to get an interview, to get hired. With the field trips, we had to think out the box as well. Um, we did our research and we found that several pro there are several programs that provided virtual field trips and we were able to get let allow our students participate in these. And the field trips are, um, are based around cybersecurity history, any cybersecurity careers, and any type of cybersecurity um, experience. Now with the clubs, we had to do a figure out how are we gonna do very hands-on clubs virtually? Um, that was probably one of the more difficult uh, activities to kind of figure out how to work around. So what we did is we refocused it. We refocus it to focus on making sure students are prepared to enter the workforce, meaning they have the certificates that they need, they have their resume created and done, and they have an e-portfolio ready to go and show. We also, um, this kind of ties in with our capture the flag competitions. These have always been around, uh, but they just move their events online, so it's virtual. Um, and we were able to incorporate that into our clubs. So currently the two clubs that students um, that are local to the CSM campus, campus that students are able to participate in are Women in Technology and our Cybersecurity Club. This year, we will be rolling out for the first time our boot camp for our first year cohorts. Um, what we plan is a one week boot camp for the Security Plus. Uh, Based on feedback from our advisory cam council, we've, uh, we know that this is the minimum 
certification that a student needs to get into a job in the cybersecurity field, um, especially in this area. We've been told that you need a security plus in order to obtain a security clearance. So this is very important and we wanted to focus on that and make sure we properly prepare the participants to pass the certification. Um, the last couple of things, um, I'm gonna talk about um, the others a little bit first, and then we'll talk about the computers next. So we started a YSIS, Women in Cybersecurity chapter here at CSM. Um, YSIS is a professional national organization for uh, women in cybersecurity, um, trying to gain more interest among women to participate and have careers in the field of cybersecurity. The bonus of adding this to our program is because it's a national organization, they offer mentorships. This year, our participants in the WISIS chapter um, uh, applied for the mentorship with this program and all of them have been accepted into this program and they are going to have a 12 month program with a mentor who is in the industry of cybersecurity and I, I, this is going to be benefit, beneficial to them. They're going to have insight with um, an individual and it's going to help them meet and mingle with other cybersecurity professionals as well as give them a, a step up when it comes to interviewing and looking for a job. And lastly, we provided our learners with computers. Um, we had already planned this, but this worked out really well since we hit we were hit with the pandemic. Um, so we already had um, tools for them to be able to participate in virtual activities. These computers were um, specced out by the cybersecurity faculty. So we made sure that they were ready to go and can handle any course in our program. Next, we're gonna talk about some of our best practices that um, we gathered from doing this project. Um, we focus on four areas, partnership, development, teaching, and support. Mm -hmm. As we've already mentioned, we have a partnership with our advisory councils. We take their feedback very seriously. Um, any feedback that they gave us about trends in the workforce, um, certifications that need to be important, we take this and we implement them um, as best we can into our cybersecurity curriculum. From there, we're developing um, the program, all right? In our development of the program, we have um, career events, we work with our advisors in the career services department at our college so they can help them with pro, uh, employment opportunities. This includes um, helping them write their resume, helping them create e-portfolios, and doing mock interviews to make sure that they are successful when they do go on to their interviews. Um, and of course, with our speaker series, we offer them the opportunity to engage with other cybersecurity professionals besides just the faculty middle chair. Um, now that we, we take all this, and as we stated before, we have a multidisciplinary field. So it's important that they learn a pretty wide gambit of cybersecurity skills and techniques. Uh, and we do this by um, offering our three concentrations where they can get um, a little bit of a specific skill, but not miss out on having all the other skills that are necessary to succeed. Uh, we do this by um, not just what we do in court in class, but we have a mentorship program that comes with this NSF project. We have faculty members and we've broken our participants in smaller groups so that they can have a direct contact with a cybersecurity faculty member. And we talk about various things about how to study for a cert, what certs should they focus on, um, how to pair classes together and make sure that they're successful academically as well as when they leave and graduate from CSM. And lastly, we have our support. First thing we do is we make sure that our courses are closely aligned with the certifications that our advisory panel has 
and has told us are important to the program. And it, it doesn't just stop with us teaching the students what they need to know, but it also has to do with the faculty staying up to date and on the current technology and maintaining their own certifications. Um, so our faculty members attend webinars, take courses, go to conferences, um, you go to various programs to earn the, their CEUs to maintain their certifications, as well as for themselves, take new certifications to make sure they're up to date uh, and able to teach our students the latest and greatest technology in the field of cybersecurity. And from here, I'll pass it back to Mary Beth, and she's going to tell us a little bit about our project outcomes. Thank you, Lakeisha. So a lot has been said throughout our presentation about what we hope to accomplish. And what this slide does is really just distill all of the key points into nine final, final statements, if you will. So as we, we established earlier, our end goal is to provide our community, government, industry, perhaps even within the school system, qualified cyber employees that meet the needs of the, of, 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 of the workforce. That has been our overarching goal and what we have been working towards throughout this project. As we do that though, just like Lakeisha was just saying, we're trying to do that in a very holistic manner. In other words, we absolutely and 100% support our students. We want them to have that feeling of connectedness and inclusivity and be a part of the college, of their cohort group, of the cyber program, and then ultimately the cyber community. But we also support our cyber faculty, as Lakeisha was just saying, with, with the support that they need to be experts and qualified professionals within the classroom and provide the mentorship and the support that the students need. Ultimately, our end goal is to provide students with the, the joy of a cyber career. And we're, we're completely serious about that as we, as we help them and, and they enter the workforce. And through, the, uh, through a variety of activities, through a variety of events, through networking, again, through mentorship, through, through any support that they might come to us with. And so we do remain open to their questions and their concerns. We, we meet them where, where they are and we help them be successful. That has been our overarching goal to offer, again, a diverse cybersecurity workforce to those throughout Southern Maryland, the Washington DC region, and probably and potentially even nationally as well. So as we move to our final slide in terms of our actual presentation, I would like to close with the following thoughts. If we engage students in their own learning, as well as incorporate their, their exposure and engagement with their peers, the faculty, the school community, and with cybersecurity professionals at an early stage, we feel strongly that the students will then feel a part of their educational process and that they will be able to cultivate a strong alliance for their professional careers. Through this connection between industry and government partners, the school community and the students themselves, we can garner a positive student school industry relationship. And we can help all students, but especially those who may be disenfranchised and, and both foster and be successful in academics as well as professionally. If you would like more information on our NSF project, please feel free to reach out to any of us on the project team. We would be happy to answer your questions and provide any additional information. And then we'll, we're prepared to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Beth, Chris, and Lakeisha. Any, any questions for the panelists? While you're thinking about if you have any questions, I'm going to post just a couple resources. 
Um, I would like to add that um, we're slowly starting, especially with our first year cohort, cohorts, um, we're slowly starting to get some data back of, from some of the participants. And we do have one participant that is proven to um, done quite well with it. This, uh, this student will be graduating uh, from CSM this spring with a A plus, security plus, networking plus, and um, AWS certifications. So um, he is one of hopefully many that show that, you know, this program and this method does work and produce the results that we expect to come out of the program. That's great. Yeah, and maybe just to piggyback on that a little bit, um, Lakeisha, she brought up the, the fact that the student is coming out with a AWS Cloud Practitioner Certificate. I saw that email this morning about this. Um, we have, it, it's a separate degree, but you know, previously we had a degree that was information technology, you know, and it was sort of a, a generic IT degree that was turning out people that would sort of work in your IT support department was sort of the target. And based on feedback from the advisory council, that, de that entire degree program was um, completely overhauled and it's now called cloud and information technology. And the goal is to send students out um, with both the AWS cloud practitioner and the AWS solutions architect associate um, certificates. And so we've added two classes um, to cover that, and um, and at the same time, those classes are available to our cybersecurity um, students. And the ones taking the information assurance uh, concentration will take that first AWS class. And uh, we've certainly been actively encouraging other students to take that as well. Um, just with the the proliferation of, of of you know systems, especially government systems and and DoD moving. Uh, you know, their infrastructure into the cloud. Um, it's important for people who are our customers, as well as um, our locations. So for, for those of you who aren't local, um, may not be aware that Amazon is opening their HQ2 um, just up the road in, in Crystal City, or they renamed it something else now for them, but um, um, close to the Pentagon. And um, we also see ourselves as a pipeline of students that are gonna be fulfilling uh, a number of jobs up there. And Amazon has thrown around numbers of something like, 20,000 jobs over the next five years um, in, in that facility. So um, we would love to certainly see our, our students uh, heading up in that direction as well. And uh, hopefully uh, those course additions will provide them the means to get there. That may be a good segue, yeah. Chris. Um, Tony uh, posted a, 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 well, a comment and a question. He said, great idea and presentation question. Where do the majority of your students, uh, cyber students work, private industry, government? Um, I'll go ahead and answer that one. Um, of, through building community, not just with the NSF program, but with um, all of our cyber students, um, they tend to let me know when they've gotten new positions and things like that, which is always great news to hear. Um, but the students that have responded and or have let me know about their new career, they tend to be in some type of government form, whether it's local government or um, federal government. The last few are local, I believe, and I think there's one or two that's in uh, federal government or DOD, which is um, department. Well, I'm sure everybody knows what DOD is. Interesting, thank you. Thanks for your question, mm -hmm. Tony. Lori Sussman, who happens to be our presenter next week, um, she said, very exciting program. How long does the NSF grant cover and how do you plan to sustain it? Do you have some private partnerships? So I, I guess I can jump in on that one because we've talked about this. So it was a three-year program starting in October of 2019. Um, and, and as I said, the first from October through, you know, sort of May was a planning period. And we, we started, you know, the idea was we would interview and select students for the cohort um, over the summer and then begin them in the summer of 2021, which we did, and then have the second student cohort start in summer of, or in fall of 2022, which we did. Um, so it, it runs through next year. So we still have uh, our, our first year cohort will be graduating um, in 2022. 
and the second year cohort will be graduating in spring of 2023. After that, we're really not sure. I think um, we I, I think we've we've seen that there's been certainly some benefit of just you know some special care and feeding of, of those students. And I think especially during COVID, as I said earlier, um, it se it seems to have made a difference. I think things would have been more chaotic and more disconnected for those students that were really dedicated. Um, so I think what we'll we'll begin to explore. Um, at, we've just finished the, you know, the second year annual report and, and, and I think probably this is the moment to begin exploring do we can we apply for an extension and continue another cohort or another two cohorts or something like that. Um, we don't really have any other partners out, out, outside of ourselves and, and that's also something that we could look into so the second part of your question is no we've really been doing this sort of um, by ourselves, but it may be interesting to, to talk about, maybe we look at some of those organizations that end up with a lot of our students, or um, as Amazon begins ramping up their activity um, right up the road, maybe that would be another opportunity to, uh, to get involved. We know, um, just anecdotally speaking with other organizations in the area, some four-year organizations that Amazon is getting pretty hungry for students. So um, I'd certainly like to see that happen. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what appetite Amazon has to recruit from the local community colleges, right? There's, you know, in in that service area are a number of of community colleges. Certainly, I don't mean to steal any thunder from Co College of Southern Maryland, but the point is, right, there's many good community college right. um, colleges in that service area. There's obviously more demand probably than supply. And many of those programs like your, your all's is have had mature cybersecurity programs for a number of years. So I'll be, I'll be curious to sort of check back with you all and see what, what Amazon's appetite is to recruit from the two-year school yeah. specifically. Yeah, I'm curious. And, and like you said, there really is a, a healthy group of, you know, between, you know, you, you, your previous institution and Montgomery and Northern Virginia. I mean, there's an awful lot of, you know, Howard County, there's an awful lot in the area that are, that are thriving and doing well. Yes. Mm -hmm. True. Great. Thanks for the questions. Anybody else? I posted a couple just links to some resources that may be of interest to folks, um, additional curricular resources. We run an annual community college cyber summit. That's May 23rd through the 25th at Sinclair Community College. Um, and, and Chris and Mary Beth and Lakeisha, this is a shameless, selfish sort of request. But if you haven't thought about submitting a presentation for that, there'll be an opportunity. I think this would be welcome in that community. Um, and it's at Sinclair Community College, which is in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and uh, we get close to about 600 participants, although it's community college is in the title. There's a, we get about 104 year faculty and um, upwards of about 35 industry partners. Um, there may be a, a chance also to sort of forge some relationships with the industry partners that we don't want to get behind something like this. So I encourage you to do that. And then, of course, we have membership programs. There's a link there. So any final words from our panelists? We really appreciate the opportunity to present today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for submitting. Appreciate sharing. And, and for those that um, registered, all of you, um, we will, once we clean this up a little bit, we make the recording available on our YouTube channel. And I'll use the same registration system that you all use to sign up to send out a link to a landing page where you can you can uh, access this recording and share it far and wide. And I want to thank I want to thank Mary Beth, Chris, and Lakeisha. And I want to thank uh, all of our participants, especially those that posted questions. So check your inboxes for future webcast invitations and links to today's recording and presentation slide deck. And thank you all for your doing to keep yourselves, your family, and others safe and healthy. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Great. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, everyone.